The other common format was Super VHS, or SVHS. It had an inherently better resolution. It recorded 400 lines instead of 240 lines. Still not as good as NTSC, but a step up. In this format, pixel color was stored separately from pixel brightness. Pixel color was stored in what is called the chrominance band. And pixel brightness was stored in something called the luminance band, or luminance signal. Storing these separately provided more vibrant and more realistic color. However, both the better resolution and the better color come at the cost of money. Super VHS was significantly more expensive. The other downside was compatibility. Super VHS tapes are not compatible with old VHS players. All of those technologies that we've been discussing, everything starting with photographic film, laser imagers, thermal printers, fiber optic recorders, and ending on video cassette tapes, all of those were analog technologies. They didn't store the data in a digital format. That meant that all of those were very difficult to duplicate and over time would degrade. The first digital technology we're going to talk about is the magneto-optical disc. These were very popular in the 1990s. They worked in a somewhat roundabout and complicated way. The medium itself was a round disc, usually within a plastic case. When placed in a drive, the disc spun. To write, a very hot laser was focused on a very small spot on the disc. The temperature was heated to exceed the Curie temperature for the disc, and then a magnetic field stored either a zero or a one in that spot. The laser would then be advanced, or the disc rotated, and then this process repeated. To read the magneto-optical disc, the laser would be turned down, not nearly as intense, and then it would scatter across those same spots that had been recorded as zeros or ones, and then a detector would read the light that scattered off of those spots, and then translate that back into zeros and ones. The magneto-optical disc had a huge advantage over a lot of the technologies that preceded it. Because it was digital storage, it was less likely to degrade than tape, you could store more information, it was more likely to be compatible, you didn't have to worry about expensive different players, just the one drive for the magneto-optical disc. However, it was more expensive than those technologies. It was quickly replaced by an even newer technology that you might be more familiar with, the compact disc. This was more expensive than CDs and slower to record than CDs. So let's talk about all of those CD and CD-like technologies. CDs, DVDs, and the new Blu-ray. All three of these work on the same principle. The disc consists of a clear plastic backing with a very thin coating of metal. Sometimes they also use a layer of colored dye. This is specifically used in CDR, CDRW, or DVD-R technologies. These were much cheaper than the magneto-optical drive. The way they worked is that an intense laser would burn a small pit in the aluminum or the dye. Each pit was encoded as either a zero or a one, providing digital storage. They were read using a less intense laser to scan the disk. And this laser detects the distance between the laser and where it's hitting. The deeper the pit, the greater the distance. This is translated back into zeros and ones. So what's the difference between these technologies? The difference is the laser. CDs use a 780 nanometer laser. DVDs use a 650 nanometer laser. And Blu-rays use a 450 nanometer laser. 
notice that 450 nanometers is in the blue range of the spectrum, which is why it's called a Blu-ray disc. The shorter the wavelength of the laser, the smaller a pit can be burned into and then read on the same disc. Nowadays, most images are stored on PAX systems. PAX stands for Picture, Archiving, and Communication Systems. PAX is a system consisting of both hardware and software that's used for short and long-term storage of these images. PAX is basically a big central storage area and a bunch of little ways to connect to that storage area. Large hard drives or servers store huge numbers of scans and then we have multiple ways to connect to these scans. The images in a PAX are stored in a format called DICOM, Digital, Imaging, and Communications in Medicine format. DICOM images store all of the information in the image in a variety of image formats, as well as patient information such as name and medical record number. There are multiple options for connecting to a PAX system. Some systems use local area networking only, where you have special PAX computer stations that are connected to the servers where the images are stored. Some places use inter or intranet based technology, which allow you to access the PAX only from special computers that have connection to the PAX system, and usually not available outside of the hospital. And some places use true internet based technology where you can access the images from anywhere by logging into the PACs from a remote location. These PACs formats are consistent and internationally used format for medical information and imaging storage. We have now finished the content for the image storage and display lecture. Let's end with a question. Which of the following displays does not involve a cathode ray tube? A. A television monitor. B. A fiber optic recorder. C. High resolution CRT. Or D. A flat screen LCD monitor. You may pause the video to decide on an answer. The answer is D, a flat screen LCD monitor. Recall that a television monitor and a high resolution CRT absolutely involve a CRT. Remember that the fiber optic recorder records images by using a UV based CRT. The LCD stands for liquid crystal display, which is not a CRT based technology.